das. Oh, charge, charge, charge. Einmal mal kill. The Demon of the Ancient World. Oh, Sun. What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are going to cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.2 on the beautiful, famous, classical map Anorian, a 2v2 map, and of course, it's gonna be a 2v2 game. If the red Isengard player Anton, his ally at the bottom right is the blue Isengard player Adixon, they're against the green Mordor player Craxy, and his ally top left is the orange Isengard player Matthias. So it's four evils Mordor Isengard versus double Isengard. I mean, of course, you know, it's gonna favor the Mordor Isengard team the longer the game goes on, but there is always a but. Yeah, because double Isengard will have the chance to get double freezing rain later on, right? And when you time this correctly with your ally, you can make sure to negate the leadership from your opponents all game long, okay? And that pretty much will shut down Mordor completely. But Mordor can bully Isengard early game by building multiple orc pits. I would assume like two, maybe three orc pits in total to keep the pressure up and force the Isengard players into a defensive playstyle. And you, you yourself and your ally can actually have a free game in which you can, you know, shine bright like a diamond. The thing is, these players, they actually played very defensively, double Isengard, um, which is something unusual, because you don't, you actually want to, you know, punish Mordor early game. And for now, Mordor's early game is pretty much flawless. He has a, you know, untouched economy with two settlements outside, and he will grow rich. When you play this match, okay guys, listen to me. When you play against Mordor and Isengard, and you are double Isengard, what you want to do is you want to focus hardcore Mordor down. And here is why. Mordor opening with Orc Pit in almost every single matchup and recruits Golem 2 in almost every single matchup. That means he will have no money from the inside the base, only the two settlements outside is going to give him money. And if you hard focus him down, he will be pretty much out of the game immediately. It's going to be quite tough for Mordor to get back into the game. That's going to delay, if nothing else, his troll cage a bit. And Nas goes Witch King, everything is going to be delayed. And that's how you want to play against Mordor. You want to shut down Mordor early game. When you focus Isengard, it's not bad either. But most of the time, Isengard opening with double furnace inside the castle, which means he has a good resource income and he doesn't really rely on the Lambert Mills outside. So, quick tip when you play, when you find yourself in a matchup like this, okay? Look, the workers are going crazy. In this situation, you want to kill the workers first, which you can do, by the way. You can target the workers because, look, they are repaired. I mean, it's going to go down anyway, but they actually stalled for a long time. Isengard's eco is looking good from the blue Isengard player Adixon. Is I like the red Isengard player? Went for Uruk Pit, so he has not a good looking eco. I like this build order way more, by the way. Because then you have always enough money to keep making Uruks and to expand at the same time. When you do Uruk Pit, when you get Uruk Pit too early on the field, you need to always make a choice. Do I go for one more Uruk or do I build a furnace instead? And if you then lose your settlement outside, it's going to be a quite a bad situation. Okay, that's going to be the Lumber Mill down. But look at the money from Mordor. That's how rich Mordor B is becoming. And you don't shut it down early game. Matthias, the orange Isengard player, is also a very good looking base. He has a Uruk pit. You don't want to, I mean, guys, when you have Mordor ally, you don't need Lourdes. Okay, Lourdes is good hero, not against double evil though. And not when you have Mordor ally. Because Mordor can already give you leadership. And what you, can, what you could do, instead of going for Lourdes, is make army and go for armory. You know, because you have Eye of Sauron for free damage leadership. Later on, you have Drama Trolls. So you don't lack of leadership when, you, when your ally is Mordor. It means you don't need to invest money and time into get, getting leadership from Lourdes, for example. But it's not a bad thing. I mean, the more leadership, the better. But I'm just saying that you can play it a bit faster and finish this game way sooner. Okay. I mean, look at this, dude. He needs to fight this. He needs to reclaim his map control because his base is not looking very good. His opponent has already Lourdes up on the field. It's gonna eventually move to the troll layer top side and creep this. On the bottom side, we have upgrades coming in for Isengard player Adixon. And he also didn't go for Lourdes. I mean, here, by the way, you should go for Lourdes. At least one of you. And this player does it because you need leadership. <laughs> you know, you have only Warchant and you need Lourdes leadership. You need it. 
troll is gonna make sure to protect those settlements and two more trolls required from the troll kitch to get it to level two which will give the player the chance and the option to recruit the mordor drummer troll drama troll <laughs> okay he was able to creep this with the carnage level almost four level five is the power spike we are looking for it's unlocking 60 percent more dps constantly as long as lords is nearby which is crazy it's actually Craxy. <laughs> That's like the words you like? Ah, okay. Alright. One more troll is required. And then, hallelujah, boys. Okay. That's gonna be the shi time for the Mordor Isengard team to shine. And even though Urks are fast, but trolls are faster. Faster. And Lurz is also fast, but again, trolls are faster. Trolls can catch up to any infantry unit or hero in the game. And one of the changes to the patch 2.2 is to make the trolls always charge. They didn't before in the previous versions of the game in the vanilla versions of the game and when you would target something they would start running but if you move normally they would just walk normally and now it's much easier to micro with them okay i mean the problem is this lords can't approach this lords this lords has carnage and cripple and this guy is only level one yeah he can cripple you but he has no keep pressure he can't kill you Mordor was able to capture the middle cam in the middle three trolls they're looking for <laughs> looks like meets bacon never mind they, they, they don't want to overcome it which they shouldn't because without leadership trolls are actually not very tanky and two crossbow men with fire arrows can actually one shot them so you need leadership but again very good looking you know map for the mortar isengard team i think he has also all the upgrades yes he does fire arrows heavy armor banner all what it takes and all what it needs and he will have also lures level five by the way so, we are talking about combos with Lord's Leadership, Warchant, Eye of Sauron, and Drummer Troll, eventually very soon. But because of the middle camp, Mordor is kind of poor, so he couldn't recruit the Troll number 4, but he will be very, very soon. And maybe they should not wait for it, though. What you can do is you can hit and run. You don't, wanna f you don't need to fully commit, but most of the time people are making the mistake, they are waiting too long. Like they do, for example, now. This Isengard play could very well go forward, at least destroy the settlement here, put some pressure, we force the enemy to use Warch and disengage, and do this over and over again. If four combos against two, but that's gonna be the proof that quality beats quantity. Way more leadership on this side than on this side. Okay, Craxis. The trolls shouldn't commit, by the way, and you don't want to be clumped like this. Because when you are clumped like this, trolls with three in their hands, they have like crazy AoE damage, okay? Splash damage. That means they can hit multiple units at the same time. And if, he, if he's lucky, he can kill a whole battalion with only one swing of his, of his tree, of his weapon. Isengard making more combos, three combos. Troll cage, level two. Drummer troll on the way. And this Isengard player also also making combos. Uh, what he should also what he could do, I mean it's kind of risky, but I think it's worth a try, is to go for a Saruman. Or go for the nah, works, they won't be that good. So it's all about fighting against time. Okay. When you give Mordor too much time, he will have also the chance to recruit Witch King and then later on, later on even catapults. So it's gonna be harder and harder until you get to freezing rain. But we are far away from this situation in which freezing rain is going to be enabled but it's building up all to this moment if uh, we will have a crazy big fight happening very very soon okay now what we have we have four trolls for the mordor three combos for isengard and lords leadership okay on the other side we see one two three four five six seven combos with lords level two so only war chant will make them stronger but this army you have to have the drama troll which is the best leadership in the game by far and what Dramatrol also makes sure of is that you can level up twice as quickly. And also, Eye of Sauron gives you 50% more combat experience. It means you will have 150% combat experience, which makes you level up more than twice as quickly. So they are going now, Ham. Let's see. Demolition the building, what? Look at them, boys. Look at them shining. Oh, Dramatrol. Smart move. Bad micro from Mordor. Losing the Dramatrol is actually big. That's a big chunk of leadership. That's why you want to always position your heroes and your sportive units like Drama Troll behind. Without Drama Troll, 
trolls are dying like a fly because lords can't provide leadership to them the drama troll number two is coming but they are fighting non-stop kill lords and there is also saruman there is no leadership saruman can maybe do something he's gonna use and cancel the warm tongue he's going ham with the fireball on your face son and do look at this they are trying to kill the lords but lords is too tanky what you can do is you can use carnage too and he will be able to cripple the enemy lords look that's the Saruman coming in crash from downtown the two wizards but there is a level four a level five unit and lords is level six has now the pillage Saruman is going a little bit too deep but lords won't be able to survive this burst and he is going down down to goblin town <laughs> the witch king is coming for even greater amount of leadership Saruman has been crippled from the blue Isengard and the Witch King in the patch 2.3 is also the debuff making your units lose 15% of their armor. This guy is looking to warm tongue, but I think it's too risky. Too much leadership. Do, does anybody have rain anytime soon? The answer to this question is yeah, Matthias is the closest one, obviously, because he killed the most stuff. But the other Isengard player went for the Tainted Land, which is a mistake against Mordor because Mordor can easily cover this. Saruman is going for the sac Fireball number two. Uh, this, Rohan, this Isengard player has to bring reinforcements, but he is not in a good shape. He is not very rich. The pressure continues. They are in a very defensive playstyle. You, you can see the money going ham for the lords from Mateusz because he is having pillage. You know, kind of banking. He's gonna go for a risky play, but he will be able to steal one combo. But Saruman will get junk, 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 junk. But in the last moment, he fireballed and almost killed the whole battalion. Witch King is going a little bit too deep. He's gonna use the Screech, but it's fine. This Lourdes from Mateusz has been crippled. You gotta kill him. You gotta kill him. Oh, nice. The wizard. You see, when there is not enough leadership, Saruman is kind of tanky right but you can see also the other other way around when the enemy has too much leadership your saruman can't even approach them he will get one shot at. the only thing they get out of this was to kill the lords from Mateusz, the orange isengard player but he can simply revive him and that's what you want to do immediately he's gonna make more into more combos his saruman was able to survive almost level eight i mean whole level away but it's gonna unlock the will of saruman again healing that's gonna give you the potential to make a risky play because that's the reason i mean we were thinking about what to add to for saruman to make him more impactful later on because the way saruman was designed the second he joins the battlefield he would have all the abilities available and there was actually not a big solid valid reason to level him up you know because you wouldn't really get too much out of it yeah you get a bit more defense and a bit more alt attack damage but it doesn't really add any <laughs> interest for the player to level him up now with this one, you have actually the potential to go for a risky play, okay? So you can go for a warm tongue, heal yourself, or you can heal your lords. And, you know, it's it's strong, very strong, by the way. But it's a wizard, and you need to get into level 8. And leveling up Saruman is a bit harder than leveling up Ganov, because he is not mounted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 combos. And uh, Karexi, the Mori player, needs a second drama troll. Because then the drama trolls, they will give up, they will give leadership to each other, making themselves a bit tankier. It's also Witch King has to be coming a bit closer to spot. Okay, there comes the freezing rain from Mateusz. I mean, that's not gonna do too much. I mean, yeah, of course. They will have war chants not available. Saruman is back in the business. Look at them, dude. How you wanna deal with this? This army is too strong, but Drama Troll is inting, intentionally feeding, trying to give out, give the chance. It comes a fireball, Lords level two. We see fireballs, massive army, quantity versus quality, ladies and gentlemen. The Drama Troll is being chunk, 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 chunked. The only way I can see them turning this game around, if if Mat if Mateusz doesn't pay attention to the Saruman, which he surely does. Oh, beautiful! That was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Look, now the combos are fighting. And those wizards, ladies and gentlemen, can turn the game around. And now, that's the friendly fire right there. The level 10 combo, which uh, which the Blue Isengard player, Edikson, was able to steal from his opponent, killed all the heroes. Now they are coming back, but the combos are being chung, 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 chung. The beast is half gone, and this Saruman is not done yet. He is not finished yet. He's about to finish now. Take this, son. Boom. And also loads almost level 5. Now the combos are zooming, but the level 10 is gone. You can see the animation of the, of the Palantir. 
entlugte Red Eisengards Army. Holy Guacamole, what is this? Uh, this tens of thousands, you know, that's that's the situation right there, okay? We have almost seven power points for Anton. That's the Isengard player right top right. This is the red one. And he has almost the freezing rain too. Half a power point. Again, that's a massive power spike because his ally, Erikson, already has his freezing rain. And again, if you time this correctly, you can make sure that Mordor has no leadership to pro provide for Isengard. But Mordor going for the Mumma Kill Pan. I like that. Now, normally you would go for the catapults, but it's a friendly game and you don't need to do this. Momo kills are more sexy and with the animation of burn when they take too much fire damage they will go crazy you might see some big 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 fiesta many many trolls freezing rain has to be activated and i think it has been activated now the trolls are not shining anymore the Momo kill is looking for a chance we gotta keep attention now guys he is angry he is angry he's looking 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 Oh, that was really close. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Saruman almost ran into it. The move kill, you don't want to joke with him. I mean, they cost a lot. They cost 1,800 each. That's a lot. And 40 command points. Saruman, but there are two of them. And now, when somebody say, but two Isengard is not strong. But you have two Lords, two Saruman, two Freezing Rain. I think it's pretty strong, man. I think it's pretty strong. But they gotta shoot. Mumma kill number two is coming. Witch King is actually alive, but he's far, far away because he's got he got chunked. And it looks like they wanna give up the middle camp because they know they can't hold it. Okay? Lords hitting level six. The other one is also level five. So when the rain from Matthias is on cooldown, and when the double Isengard have the rain, they have now more leadership, which is ironic, but it's simply the fact. And Mordor and Isengard. And without catapults. It's gonna be difficult and i would i do it that's a the play there here to steal the two level 10 combos or the level 10 and the level 7 combo with the saruman was the only reason why they got this far in the in the skin all middle camp no siege weapons I, i'm i'm pretty sure you just need to make more into more combos at this point you know more and more combos because they are very very strong at this point so take a look power points anton has the freezing green available again it's gonna shut down the leadership from Matthias and his ally Craxy. And Arikson has the rain on cooldown. He has 9 power points in total. He's 11 power points only away from getting to the Balrog. Then we have Matthias. His rain is still on cooldown for the next 30 seconds. But he has 10 power points in the bank. He's only 10 power points away from his own Balrog. And then we have also Craxy. Craxy has almost darkness. And making Mumma kills and trolls will make sure that you won't get too many power points against rain Isengard. When you go for catapults, you can collect way more power points. But there are two wizards you gotta deal with. Even Vork riders have been recruited. There comes the freezing rain. The Vorks are diving in a little bit too deep. But they are actually getting a beautiful trample of chunking. And there comes everything. <laughs> Trolls, Nazgus, Witch King, Drama Troll, Mumma Kill, Isengard. Used the Will of Saruman, but he missed the Saruman. Saruman has been killed. Mumma Kill, charge, charge, charge. And Mumma Kill, 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 kill. Mumma killed. Saruman and he is on rampage ladies look the power points from Mordor he has 11 power points in the bank I see tainted land from somebody I don't know who's using the tainted land but it's a big mistake because if you have a tainted land from your opponent you can you know use this one to regain your leadership the level 10 combos from Matthias are hitting like a truck and it looks like the Isengard Isengard team Arikson and his ally Anton they gotta disengage from this one that means the control of the middle camp is gonna be again swapped okay so back and forth, back and forth, and those are the games we like to see. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we have freezing in available now for... Um, for um, Arikson, right? And Craxy has 5 power points in the bank after Darkness. But again, Darkness is amazing. However, Rain is hard countering this. Rain is saying, nah, you ain't getting any leadership as long as it's raining okay so again everything is possible and i believe the next big fight is going to make sure that at least adikson and also Matthias especially will get to baldrock special summon okay because he's only he's less than two power points away from the, from this and adikson this is the blue isinger plate top or bottom right is only four power points and a quarter away and he will get to this point 
he needs to revive his loot in Saruman. The more levels, the longer it's gonna take time. A level 8 Saruman has 3 minutes revive time. A level 6 loot has, for example, 2 minutes revive time. So, the, you know, the higher the level and you lose them, the bigger the punishment. And, of course, losing an Asgore or Witch King. For example, this one has always 3 minutes flat because it's for free. Okay. So, let's see. Hold big army, boys. Dream will be used. Yeah, from Alexon. And it means Mateusz has no leadership at this point. Okay, no leadership, but still level 10. You can't, you know, deny the level, level experience. Level 7, level 10, level 8. That's very strong. Trolls are diving in, but they are dying like flies. And you can see, this army has leadership, this army doesn't. Re Eye is only for uh, visual. It doesn't do anything. The Isengard is going a little bit too deep, but they want to get the Lourdes. And we're going to take a look into the power points. Mateusz has now the Balrog summon. I'm pretty sure he's going to use it maybe here, maybe here. And he's going to use it here. The demon of the ancient world is killing everything okay it's getting everything all army has been blown up and that's you can you can clip this and show oh no did you see saruman was about to come out and Balro killed him there is no way and if somebody will tell you EOD is so much better than Baldrog, show him what this Baldrog was capable of. Show him what he is doing to the double Isengard team. Killing two wizards. Oh, they actually he's showing mercy to this one. Okay. Maybe he's waiting for the next whip. Okay, but the thing is, there is no follow-up. That means Mateusz can't finish. The breath fire will be missed. You can keep flying. The wings have like literally no cooldown. You can, you see? The second you land, you can use it again. There is no cooldown. Uh, he can maybe do it one more time. Boom. He's gonna whip. Saruman got killed. And yeah, the Nazgûs are coming. The Witch King is coming. And it might be that... Oh, Adikson doesn't have the power points yet. He needs a quarter. Can he get it though? Because he has not much left on the field. Uh, that's his... Yeah, that's his Lords. He has one half a dead combo, two actually. And one combo without upgrades. He's kind of poorish. He has no money. Uh, and he needs to fill up the bees and revive his Saruman for 2,600. That's a lot of money you need to invest. But he will get to Balrog, definitely. I'm pretty sure about that one. And what this Isengard play player could do is use industry on your ally. Okay? So, because Anton has almost industry available, he's actually still more than 7 power points away from his own Balrog. And Craxy, the Mordor needs in total 14 power points so yeah of course again mordor can't really do much besides sporting unless you are spamming catapults which is kind of lame okay so mateusz has good money level 3 lumber mills you know they are making you rich everything level 3 besides this furnace here because he had a war pit here everything else is level 3 so he's making money rain is available too for mateusz so he's as strong as he potentially could get the thing is Adikson has also rain, right? That means the Drama Troll, Witch King, Saruman, Lord's leadership won't... The, the next fight is going to be without leadership for every player. They will have no leadership. It's going to cripple Saruman, but now the, the power points are there for Adikson. Is he going to use it right here on the spot? I'm not sure, but he should maybe. He's going to use the Will of Saruman to heal him up, and you see that's when the Will of Saruman is coming in handy. The Balrog has been now... Unlock from the spell block of Arikson. The Blue Isinger player is looking to use it. And there comes another demon. Summoning right in front of the Maya. Run, Saruman, you can get away. Oh, they are not paying attention. What is this? The trolls are actually going ham, but they will die. The leadership have no chance. He actually breath fired, just wings and fly. But if this guy can survive, that's gonna be big, by the way, because reviving him will take you three minutes and will also cost lots of money. But money is not a big problem for Mateusz, I'm assuming. Let me take a look into this money. Nah, money is not a big problem by all means. Yes, more than enough, okay? More than 13,000. So you can revive him a few times. And it looks like Saruman will be actually able to lift this. Breathfire, not the best. Should be always trying to kill the Uruk pit. That's the primary target in Isengard Beast. And also, you need to destroy the Citadel. If you don't, oh! Oh, nice. He actually kind of draw the attention to this middle camp and end up killing the wizard anyway. Again, three minutes revive time, which is long, which is very long. Okay, now the next, of course, is going to be Craxy. If he gets to Balrog and his, his opponent, Anton, 
the red eyes and got play top right gets the balrog it's gonna be a whole different situation because then you have four balrogs in total and that's what those four evil faction gameplays are capable to do the pressure was always at the bottom right i believe the double isengard team they were never able to reach the craxy piece the mortar piece and Mateusz piece the Mateusz piece and the beast from the green mortar player have been untouched since the beginning of the game and for that reason there are multiple level one furnaces because he have been losing them over and over again okay so but again Mateusz is not over and that's what you want to do with Isengard you want to keep producing units Saruman mispositioning he will, he will die in a second there comes the freezing rain from the red actually the red one is getting so many power points too maybe he can do something here maybe he can get to 20 just commit guys listen to me the, I will give you advice oh <gasps> don't build 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 okay run 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 nice nice that's what will of Saruman does okay that's what will of Saruman does gives you the crazy outplay opportunity he stole them all <laughs> Now they get back to Mateusz, but this is a fight and a half, boys. Now, the Eisenhower player Anton has also Badrock available. Adixon's Badrock is less than halfway up. Mateusz still needs around 30, to 30 seconds to 1 minute to get to, to summon his Badrock for the second time. And last but not least, Craxy is still far away. He has only one catapult that's by all means not gonna be enough to get the power points you need and now maybe for the first time in this game the double isengard team get to push now after playing this game for many many years you need to have a feeling about when the baldrog from Matthias is gonna be available again and that means you need to instinctly play around this okay you don't want to be clumped into one location in which the baldrog is gonna kill all your army with one single summon and Mateusz Kulda, Mateusz Barok is indeed available in 10 seconds so this is not looking good for the double Isengard team because Barok right here on the spot will wipe out everything but the thing is actually okay never mind Mateusz has army still level 10 combos Saruman loads everybody's alive everybody's alive that's not the best Balrog summon from Anton. He could have done this much, much better. Ooh, son! There is no way! I think that's the best Balrog. Oh my. I'm speechless, dude. I think that's the best Balrog I was able to see so far. Oh, I think he killed like what? Eight battalions of armies? This Balrog was, could have been much better. Because the army from uh, Matthias is pretty much untouched. So, the middle camp will be captured by Matthias, actually. If Bal <laughs> dude, that's also new. It's using Balrog to buy the middle camp. <laughs> okay. The Balrog won't have too much time left anymore. And this Balrog will be able to do some economical damage, but again, economical damage doesn't really matter against uh, Mateusz. He has 10,000, so he can... The good thing is he destroyed the Urupit level 3. That's gonna be minus 50% production speed. Will slow down the production quite a bit, but it's fine because he's almost command points kept anyway. What, what you want to do in reality is what Mateusz did. You want to summon Balrog to kill the army first. So you kill this army here, that's gonna buy you more time than destroying his buildings. Because unless you know you can destroy the whole base, which you just can't, it's not possible. Okay. All right. So this game isn't over yet because um, Adixon, the blue Eisenhower player, will be also able very soon to summon his Balrog for the second time. He has freezing rain available, but unlike the last few times, Mordor is now bringing catapults to the fight. Okay. So that's gonna make Mordor finally be able to gain power points for himself as well again he is not far away from the Balrog too he is at 16 power points so he needs only four power points and he will get the Balrog we will have four Balrogs Balrog available for every player every player may it be the blue eyes and the red eyes and the orange eyes or the green Mordor will be able to call up 
Hold on. The demon. Okay, that's gonna be a big commitment. Rain is active. Fireball has been used. I don't know what the fireball was hitting. Saruman is getting knocked down on the ground. 17 power points. We gotta take a look. Fireball is gonna be now used to destroy two catapults. Saruman has to run for his life. I've seen the warm tongue now coming in clutch from the orange. Saruman <laughs> from Matthias is gonna even level up the army. And that might be the ending of the game. But the Baldrog from Arikson is available. And he's gonna summon it right next to the Witch King. This can also hurt Witch King a little bit. But Witch King is of course not a very squishy hero. And heroes don't take too much damage from this seed. From this summon damage. It would be kinda of odd to see Ganoff getting one shot for the, for the summon. And I think they will be able to defend themselves once again. But again, you can kite Baldro quite decently. You need to kinda... Of, uh, have like a 200, 200 IQ moving wise. When you see him flying, you need to kinda... Of, predict his landing point and you can try to oh nice nice out uh, now nice cancel animation you don't need to wait for the breath fire to go off you can cancel the animation the second you go you send them bent over to use the breath fire you can keep moving he will do the breath fire but you don't waste time two balrogs at the same time by the way this one is from mordor and look at this man this is something you don't see very often boys this is something you don't see very often boys Matthews Saruman is going a little bit too deep. We might be able to survive this. Oh, Lord's hitting. Nah, he's gone. But losing his tower, he's gonna break fire of Lord's. Oh, Lord's has been fired. <laughs> he has been fired. And Arison has been defeated. What a game, dude. It was a nice game, though. Really, guys? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. I think it was a nice game. We've seen some juicy Baldrog summons all over the map, you know, summoning, killing armies left and right. It was really, really fun to watch. Really, really fun to care. So, me, you know, hopefully also fun to watch for you. Now, it's going to be a 2v1 situation. Um, and the Baldrog from Anton and the Baldrog from Matthias is going to be available at the same time. But again, there is zero person hope. Like, you can't. The Isengard has two bases in the middle camp. So you need to kind of somehow defeat Mordor. But even if you do, let's assume you do this, you destroy the Mordor player, you will have to defeat Isengard with three bases, which is something you can't do. You just can't. You have not the money in the options. Because this player can just go for three Uruk pits and produce like crazy. And you can't keep up with the speed. That's why money and map control is essential at every stage of the game i mean he's gonna i mean I, I respect that though he's fighting the last you know the last fight is gonna happen very very soon and i think that's the demonstration how powerful balrog can be if you use correctly you know like I, for me personally i would prefer balrog over eod in nine out of ten situations the only time eod is better is if you uh, if your initial summon doesn't kill everything, you can split up the EOD a little bit, kill the heroes a bit faster, right? But in those all-out fights, Balrog's Devastation, the insta-kill on the army, and then the chance to follow up this to kill structures. So you have the mix to kill army and buildings at the same time, which EOD can't. EOD doesn't deal damage to the buildings. They do, but it's very limited. And Balrog can do both. But again, if there is a battalion, there is a battalion, there is a battalion. If they, they are not grouped like this, EOD might be better because you have the chance to catch them. As EOD can outrun every infantry unit. Well, this <laughs> drama troll is just running in. Okay. Uh, we might not even see the Balrog, but I think it's going to happen very soon. Anton has the Balrog available in the last few seconds, in the next few seconds. The Warm Tongue, he was using the Speechcraft and not the Warm Tongue. <laughs> And he's gonna be killed from the <laughs> Olaka Olokai. <laughs> okay. Balrog, he's waiting for it, boys. You know what he's waiting for, right? There is one reason why he's not commit quitting this game. Because he wanna go for the juice. He wanna go for the juicy moment. He's spamming this. Trust me. The second is available now. You see? It was he was spamming this. He was literally spamming this. Catapults get inside destroyed. But hey boys. Bad boys, bad boys. <laughs> Two Balrogs, breath fire them! Holy moly! Dude, in the meantime, somewhere back behind, we had a Lourdes battle. A level 10 Lourdes from Matthias against the, I don't know, low. There is even a Golem guy. Hey man, this game offers you everything. If you don't leave a like to this video, 
you are not really into the battle for middle earth games man come on now <laughs> 17 power points in the bank balrog is about to finish this game the balrog saga would be the name of this video four evil factions four balrogs absolute fiesta game breathfire and we are coming to the end of this game boys i mean it was really hard to predict because i believe the double isengard team had the chance few times to win but i like those games which are back and forth back and forth of course few mistakes here and there but without mistakes the game can't turn into a fiesta and the longer the game gets on the more mistakes are gonna happen because you will lose your attention level but again i like mistakes uh because they are making it kind of fun and anton has been repeated gg well played i hope you enjoyed if you do you know what to do i will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys